So if asked to write a batch epic example, so you can uh, first create a class which implements the database batchable, the database dot batchable interface. Within that, you'll have to add these three methods: the start, which contains these parameters, the batchable context, and the start. In the start method, you'll give the query that you want to work with, and the execute method will work on the query and accept it as a scope para a scope list parameter. You can do the processing, update or delete or do any of these operations in the scope. And then once it is done. Uh, the execute will divide it into uh, 200 records per batch, okay? And uh, finally, it will execute all the uh, in the process all the records, and then it will run the finish method. Now, how do you invoke uh, and monitor a batch epic? The question will be, um, what is uh, how do you invoke it? So basically, what I'll do is now I have written this inside a class, okay? I'll write this inside a class which implements batchable, and I will instantiate that. Uh, batchable uh, class method okay batch contact update is my class name batch epic i'll create an insta uh, instance and i'll use database dot execute batch to run the run the particular batch epic so i uh, database dot execute batch i'll pass the instance as well as the batch size default is 200 it can go less than this not more than this okay and it returns an id for you which you can monitor in the uh, apex jobs in setup okay so basically, this is how you once you do this database dot execute batch, your batch apex will start running in the background. Now, how do you monitor this uh, thing? So it returns an ID. It is stored in the async apex job object. It is a system object, S object, which stores all the sync, uh, all the asynchronous jobs. Okay, you can use this. Uh, this way, you can check the method. Uh, you can check the progress of the records in the batch job. If there are any errors or anything, it will list out over there. You can also use the ID to stop the job. If you want to stop the job, you can pass the ID to the method system dot about job and it will stop running. Now, typically, if you want to query this, you can find out like this. You can give them uh, values. There are many more fields over here from the async apex job where ID is equal to get the current uh, this current job ID. That is this BC that which will be created over here, right? So this is the job ID that you want to pass over here. So this will give you that status. You can also go, to, the best way is you can also go to set up Apex job and here it will show you the status, whether it's completed, if it's with errors, whether it's successful. So these ways you can monitor the code. So uh, uh, typically, interview may try to probe you and ask you which, which one method to monitor is more. So this is like, you know, for programmatically, if you want to monitor, you use the query. Otherwise, if you want to uh, physically, like, you know, non-programmatically, if you want to monitor, you use Apex jobs. So just be a little alert. The interviewer may try to confuse you or you may want to check whether you have really done hands-on work. So how do we now, can you schedule a batch Apex? Yes. So we can uh, use scheduled Apex to uh, schedule a batch Apex. Okay. So this class is going to implement schedulable interface and has only one method execute. In the previous one, we had start, execute, and finish. Here, you have only one method, which is to be implemented. <coughs> we can instantiate a batch apex via the database.execute batch inside this execute method. Okay. So you have to explain this way. Like first, you create a class, your batch apex class. Okay, the normal class which we created, which does the normal batch apex uh, logic contains start, execute, and finish. Then you create another class which implements schedulable. And it has one method. In this, what you do is you do the same thing. You instantiate the object of the batch effect, and then you say database dot execute batch. Okay, you have with the, you write that within that. Now this does not mean that is it is executed. Okay, only thing is you have created the class. So now how do you call this batch schedule update class, uh, the scheduler class? So how do you call that? So then uh, how do we schedule a class? Is this way? Again, you have to create an instance of the schedule class. Okay. And then you create a, uh, this is called as a cron parameter. Cron parameter, you can check it online in uh, internet. Okay, this is common. And it is, or sometimes it is specific, likely different for Salesforce. You can check the document. You don't have to buy hard this. Okay. So then you say system.schedule, you, you give it a job name. Then you give the cron expression at what time, what monthly, weekly, what you want to run hourly. And you pass this object of this shed, uh, schedulable apex. And then it will start executing the same way. Like batch effect, but it will start executing at a particular time where that you specify in the uh, cron parameter. This is called as the cron parameter. Okay. Again, you can check the status of job can be checked in Apex jobs or by querying the async Apex object. 